Chapter 2! They each had their own room and all. They were both around 70 years old or even more than that. They got a bang out of things, though, in a half assed way, of course. I know that sounds mean to say, but I don't mean it, man. I just mean that I used to think about old Spencer quite a lot, and if you thought about him too much, you wondered what the heck he was still living for. I mean, he was all stooped over, and he had very terrible posture. And in class, whenever he dropped a piece of chalk at the blackboard, some guy in the first row always had to get up and pick it up and hand it to him. That's awful, in my opinion. But if you thought about him just enough and not too much, you'd figure out that he wasn't doing too bad for himself. For instance, one Sunday when some other guys and I were over there for hot chocolate, he showed us this old beat up in the Navajo blanket that he and Mrs. Spencer bought off some Indian in Yellowstone Park. You can tell that old Spencer got a big bang out of buying it. That's what I'm saying. You take somebody old as hell like old Spencer and they can get a big bang out of buying it. The door was open, but I was sort of not anyway, just to be polite. I could see where he was sitting. He was sitting in a big leather chair. They each had their own room and all. They were both around 70 years old. Even that young. They got a bang out of things, though, in a half assed way. Of course. I know that sounds mean to say, but I don't mean it. Mean. I just mean that I used to pick old Spencer quite a lot, and if you thought about it too much, you wondered what the heck he was still looking for. I mean, he was all stooped over and had a very terrible posture. And in class, whenever he dropped a piece of chalk at the blackboard, some guy in the first row always had to get up and pick it up and hand it to him. That's awful, in my opinion. But if you thought about him just enough and not too much, you could figure that he was doing he wasn't doing too bad for himself. For instance, one Sunday, when some other guys and I were over there for hot chocolate, he showed us this old beat-up Navajo blanket that he and Mr. Spencer had bought off some Indian in Yellowstone Park. You could tell old Spencer got a big bang out of buying it. That what I mean. You could take somebody old as hell like old Spencer, and they can get a big bang out of buying a blanket. His door was open, but I sort of knocked on it anyway, just to be light now. I could see where he was sitting. He was sitting in a big leather chair, all wrapped up in that blanket I just told you about. He looked over at me when I knocked. Who's that? He yelled. Caulfield? Come in, boy. He was always yelling outside class. I got, it got on your nerves sometimes. The minute went in, I was so sorry that I got He was reading the Atlantic Monthly, and there were pills and medicine all over the place, and everything smelled like big snow spots. It was pretty depressing, and I'm not too crazy about sick people anyway. What made it even more depressing than Spencer had on this very sad, ratty old bathroom that he was probably born in or something. I don't much like to see old guys in their pajamas and bathrooms anyway. Their bumpy old chests are always showing, and their legs. Look, old guys' legs at beaches and places always look so white and unhaired. Hello, sir, I said. I got your note. Thanks a lot. He gave me this note asking me to stop by and say goodbye after vacation started on account of I wasn't coming back. He didn't have to do all that. I'd have to come over to say goodbye anyway. Have a seat there, boy, old Spencer said. He meant the best. I sat down on it. How's your gripe, sir? The boy, if I felt any better, I'd have sent for the doctor, old Spencer said. That knocked him out. He started chuckling like a madman. Then he finally straightened himself out and said, Why aren't you down at the game? I thought this was the day of the big game. It is. I was. Only I just got back from New York with the fencing team, I said. Boy, his bed was like a rock. He started getting serious as hell. I knew he would. So you're leaving us, eh? He said, Yes, sir. I guess I am. He started going into this nodding routine. You ever saw anybody nod as much in your life as old Spencer did? You'd never know if he was nodding a lot because he was thinking at all, or just because he was a nice old guy that didn't know his ass from his elbow. What did Mr. Thurber say to you, boy? I understand you had quite a little chat. Yes, we did. We really did. I was in his office for around two hours, I guess. What did he say to you? Oh, well, about life being a game and all, and how you should play it according to rules. He was pretty nice about it. I mean, he didn't hit the ceiling or anything. He just kept talking about life being a game and all. You know, life is a game, boy. Life is a game that one plays according to the rules. Yes, sir. I know it is. I know it. Game my ass. Some game. If you get on the side where all the hot shots are, then it's a game, all right? I'll admit that. But if you get on the other side where there aren't any hot shots, then what's a game about it? Nothing. No game. Has Dr. Thurber written to your parents yet? 
Old Spencer asked me, he said he was going to write them on Monday. Have you yourself communicated with them? No, sir, I haven't communicated with them. But we'll probably see them Wednesday night when I get home. And how do you think they'll take the news? Well, they'll be pretty irritated about it. I said, they really will. This is about the fourth school I've gone to. I shook my head. I shake my head quite a lot. Boy, I said. I also say boy quite a lot. Partly because I have a lousy vocabulary, and partly because I act quite young for my age sometimes. I was 16 then, and I'm 17 now. Sometimes I act like I'm about 13. It's really ironical because I'm six foot two and a half, and I and a half, and I have gray hair. I really do. The, the one side of my head, the right side, is full of millions of gray hairs. I've had them ever since I was a kid, and yet I still act sometimes like I was only about 12. Everybody says that, especially my father. It's partly true too, but it isn't all true. People always think about people always think something's all true. I don't give a damn, except that I get bored sometimes when people tell me to act my age. Sometimes I act a lot older than I am. I really do, but people never notice it. People never notice anything. Old Spencer started nodding again. He also started picking his nose. He made out like he was only pinching it, but he was really getting the old thumb right in there. I guess he thought it was all right to do because. Uh, I didn't care, except that it's pretty disgusting to watch somebody pick their nose. Then he said, I had the privilege of meeting your mother and dad when they had their little chat with Dr. Thermer some weeks ago. They're grand people. Yes, they are. They're very nice. Grand. That's a word I really hate. It's a phony. I could puke every time I hear it. Something. Then all of a sudden, Old Spencer looks like he had something very good, something sharp as a tack to say to me. He sat up more in his chair and sort of moved around. It was a false alarm, though. All he did was lift the Atlantic Monthly off of his lap and try to chuck it on the bed next to me. He missed. It was only about two and a half inches away, but he missed anyway. I got up and picked it up off down the bed. All of a sudden then, I wanted to get the hell out of the room. I could feel a terrific lecture coming on. I didn't mind the idea so much, but I didn't feel like being lectured into and smell fixed nose drops. And look at old Spencer in his pajamas and bathroom all at the same time. I really did it. It started all right. What's the matter with you, boy? Old Spencer said. He said it pretty tough, too, for him. How many subjects did you carry this term? Five, sir. And five. How many are you failing in? Four. I moved my ass a little bit on the bed. It was the hardest bed I ever sat on. I passed English all right, I said, because I had all that Beowulf and Lord Randall, my son, stuff when I was at the Wooten School. I mean, I didn't have to do any work in English at all, hardly, except write compositions once in a while. He wasn't even listening. He hardly ever listened to you when you were something. You blamed me. I flunked you in history because you knew absolutely nothing. I know that, sir. Boy, I know it. You couldn't help it. Absolutely nothing, he said over and over again. Some, that's something that drives me crazy. When people say something twice that way after you admit it the first time, then he said it even one, then he even said it three times, but absolutely nothing. I doubt very much if you opened your textbook even once the whole term. Did you tell the truth, boy? Well, I sort of glanced at through it a couple times. I told him. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. He was mad about history. You glanced through it. Eh? He said, very sarcastic. Ah, your exam paper over there on top of my chin chiffonier. On top of the pile. Bring it here, please. It was a very dirty trick, but I went over and brought it over to him. I didn't have any alternative or anything. Then I sat down in a cement bed again. Oh, you can't imagine how sorry I was getting that. I'd stop by to say goodbye to him. He started ha handling my exam paper like it was a turd or something. We studied the Egyptians from November 4th to December 2nd. You chose to write about them for an optional essay question. Would you care to hear what you had to say? No, sir, not very much, I said. He read it anyway. You can't stop a teacher when they want to do something. They just do. The Egyptians were an ancient race of Caucasians who were riding one of the northeastern sections of Africa. The latter, as we all know, is the largest content in the Eastern Hemisphere. I had to sit there and listen to that crowd. It certainly was a dirty trick. The Egyptians are extremely interesting to us today for various reasons. Modern science would still like to know what secret ingredients were that the Egyptians used when they wrapped up dead people so that their faces would not rot for innumerable centuries. 
This interesting riddle is still quite a challenge to modern science in the 20th century. He stopped reading and put my paper down. It was I was beginning to sort of hate him. Your essay, shall we say, ends there, he said in a very sarcastic voice. You wouldn't think such an old guy would be so sarcastic at all. However, you dropped me a little note at the bottom of the page, he said. I know I did, I said. I said it very fast because I wanted to stop him before he started reading it out loud. But you couldn't stop him. He was hot as a firecracker. Dear Mr. Spencer, he read out loud, that is all I know about the Egyptians. I can't seem to get very interested in them, although your lectures are very interesting. It is all right with me if you flag me, though, as I am flunking everything except English anyway. Respectfully yours, Holy Caulfield. He put my paper down and looked at me like he just beaten hell out of me in ping pong or something. I don't think I'll ever forgive him for reading me reading me that crap out loud. I wouldn't have read it out loud to him if he'd written it. I really wouldn't. In the first place, I'd only written that damn note so he wouldn't feel too bad about flunking me. me for flunking you, boy? No, sir, I certainly don't, I said. I wish to hell he'd stop calling me boy all the time. He tried chucking my exam paper on the bed when he was through this. Only he missed again, naturally. I had to get up again and pick it up and put it on, on top of the Atlantic quickly. It's boring to do that every few minutes. What would you have done in my place, he said. Tell the truth, boy. Well, you can see he felt really pretty lousy about flunking me, so I shot the bull for a while. I told him I was a real moron, all that stuff. I told him how I would have done exactly the same thing if I'd been in his place, and almost how people didn't appreciate how tough it is being a teacher. That kind of stuff. The old bull. The funny thing is, though, I was sort of thinking of something else when I shot the bull. I live in New York, and I was thinking about, about the lagoon in Central Park down near Central Park South. If I was wondering if it would be frozen over when I got home, and if it was, where did the ducks go? I was wondering where the ducks went when the lagoon got all icy and frozen over. I wondered if some guy came in a truck and took them away to a zoo or something, or if they just flew away. I'm lucky though. I mean, I could shoot the old bull. I could shoot the old bull to old Spencer, and you could think about those ducks at the same time. It's funny. You don't have to think too hard when you talk to a teacher. All of a sudden, though, he interrupted me while I was shooting the bull. He was always interrupting me. How do you feel about this, boy? I'd be very interested in that. Very interested. You mean about my flanking about out of Pensy and all? I said, I sort of wish he covered up his bumpy chest. It wasn't such a beautiful view. If I'm not mistaken, I believe you. I also had some difficulty at the Wooten School and at Elkton Hills. He didn't say it just sarcastic, but sort of nasty, too. I didn't have too much difficulty at Elkton Hills, I told him. I didn't exactly plug out or anything. I just quit, sort of. Why, may I ask? Why? Oh, well, it's a long story, sir. I mean, it's pretty complicated. I didn't feel like going into the whole thing with him. He wouldn't have understood it anyway. It was surrounded by phonies, that's all. They were coming in the goddamn window. For instance, they had this headmaster, Mr. Haas. He was the phoniest bastard I ever met in my life. Ten times worse than old Thurmer. On Sundays, for instance, old Haas went around shaking hands with everybody's parents when they drove up to school. He'd be charming as hell and all. Except some boy had some old funny-looking parents. You should have seen the way he did with my roommate's parents. I mean, if a boy's mother was sort of fat or corny-looking or something, and if somebody's father was one of those guys that would wear those suits with very big shoulders and corny black and white shoes, then Hans would be would just shake hands with them and give them a phony smile, and then he'd go for a talk for maybe half an hour with everybody else's parents. I can't stand that stuff. It drives me crazy. It makes me so depressed I go crazy. I hated that goddamn Elton Hills. Old Spencer asked me something then, but I didn't hear him. I was thinking about Old House. What, sir? I asked. Do you have any particular qualms about leaving Pensy? Oh, I have a few qualms, all right. Sure, but not too many. Not yet, anyway. I guess it really hasn't hit me yet. It takes things a while to hit me. All I'm doing right now is thinking about going home. Wednesday. I, I'm a moron. Do you feel absolutely no concern for your future, boy? Oh, I feel some concern for my future. All right. Sure, sure I do. Although I thought about it for a minute, but not too much, I guess. Not too much, I guess. You will, Old Spencer said. You will, my boy. You will when it's too late. I didn't like hearing him say that. It made me sound dead or something. It was very depressing. I guess I will, I said. I'd like to put some sense in that head of yours, boy. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help if you can. He really was, too. You could, you could see that. But it, but it was just that we were too much on opposite sides of the pole. That's all. I know you are, sir. Thanks a lot. No 
kidding. I appreciate it. I really do. I got up from the bed then. Boy, I couldn't have sat there ten, another 10 minutes in my life. The thing is, though, I have to get going now. I have quite a bit of equipment at the gym. I have to go and get a take home with me. I really do. He looked up at me and started nodding again with this very serious look on his face. I felt sorry as hell for him all of a sudden, but I couldn't just hang around there. I'd like to put some sense in that head of yours, boys. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to draw for you if I can. He really was you. I don't know, boy. I don't know. I hate when somebody answers that way. Sure. Sure, they do. I said, I mean, I mean it, sir. Please don't worry about me. I sort of well, put my hand on his shoulder. Okay, okay I, I said. Well, I really Wouldn't you like a cup of hot chocolate before yeah. you go? You Mrs. Spencer would, could would be. I really, I really would. Anyway, but the thing is, I have to get going. I have to go right to the gym. Thanks, though. Thanks a lot, sir. Then we shook hands and all that crap. It made me feel sad as hell, though. I'll drop you a line, sir. Take care of your grip now. Goodbye, boy. After I shut the door and started back to the living room, he yelled something at me, and I couldn't exactly hear him. But I'm pretty sure he yelled, good luck, at me. I hope to hell not. I'd never yell, good luck, at anybody it sounds terrible when you think about it. Well, when it's too late. I didn't like hearing him say that. It made me sound dead or something. It was very depressing. I guess I will, I said. Don't worry about I'd like me, to put I said. Some sense I mean, in that head of yours, I'll be all right. I'm trying to help you. I'm just going through I'm a trying phase to right help now. You. Everybody goes through phases really was too. don't you they? See that. I don't know, but boy. But it was just I that we were all too much on the opposite side I hate it when somebody pole, answers that way. I know sure, you are, sure they sir. do, I said. Thanks I mean a lot. it, sir. No kidding. Please don't I worry about it, me. But I, I sort really of do. put my hand on I got his shoulder. Up from the okay. bed. I said, Boy, I could have sat there you another ten minutes. Like a cup of hot chocolate life. before you go? This the thing is, would be, though, I would. I have to get going. I really now. would. But the thing I have is, quite I have a bit to get of equipment going. at the gym. I have to go right to the gym. I have to get. Thanks, though. I have to get. Thanks a lot, sir. To take home. Uh, then we shook hands. And all that crap. I really do. It made me feel like he looked sad as hell, though. And started nodding again. I'll drop you a line, sir. With this very serious look. Take care of your grip now. I felt so bad for him. After I shut the door and started back to the living room, but he I yelled something at me, but I couldn't longer. exactly hear him. The I'm pretty sure he yelled good luck at me. Pole, I hope to hell not. He I've never yelled good luck at anybody. I mean, it sounds terrible when you think about it. And his old, sad old bathrobe with his chest showing and that gripey smell of Vic's nose drops all over the place. Look, sir, don't worry about me, I said. I mean it. I'll be all right. I'm g just going through a phase right now. Everybody goes through phases and all, don't they? I don't know, boy. I don't know. I hate it when someone answers that way. Sure. Sure they do. I said, I mean, I mean it, sir. Please, don't worry about me. I sort of put my hand on his shoulder. Okay, I said. Would you like a cup of hot chocolate before you go, Miss Spencer? Would be, I would, I would, I really would. But the thing is, I have to get going. I have to go right to the gym. Thanks, though. Thanks a lot, sir. Then we shook hands and all that crap. It made me feel sad as hell, though. I'll drop you a line, sir. Take care of your bike now. Goodbye, boy. After I shut the door and started back to the living room, he yelled something at me. But I couldn't exactly hear him. I'm pretty sure he yelled, good luck at me. I hope not. I hope to hell not. I never, I never yell, good luck at anyone. It sounds terrible when you think about it.